Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're making low poly realistic rocks. This is part of the baking course and it mainly focuses on baking out cavity maps and normal maps and working with ambient occlusion. And I would say a good understanding of the Blender interface is quite important for this. It's a more intermediate tutorial. Do check out the previous episodes about baking so you understand the process behind baking and what it is. And if you're following my course on the website, make sure you've done the beginner sections. And all the links are in the description below. So very quickly, let's explain what baking a normal map actually means. If we look at the finished rocks at the moment, you can see they look very similar. But the one on the right is one and a half million faces, which we can see down here. And the one on the left, if I go into edit mode, you can see that's 225 faces. If I go into the shading tab and unplug the normal map, you can see what it looks like without it. And then I plug it in and that's what it looks like with the normal map. And this normal map that we've created is from this high poly texture here. And it works really well and looks really realistic in the way that it reflects and bounces the light off the surface of the object. So that's what a normal map does. So first of all, let's make our rock. I'll use the default cube and I'll press Control 3. That will add a subdivision surface modifier to my cube. If for some reason that doesn't work, you'll just have to do it manually by going to the subdivision surface modifier and upping the viewport count to three. So this is what we see and I'll apply that. So that has subdivided our cube and we've got nice topology to make our rock out of. The next thing is to go into the sculpting workspace and just pull your cube around until it looks rock shaped. I'm going to turn symmetry off. So I'll go to the symmetry tab over here and turn symmetry off and then choose the grab brush, make it nice and big and just pull your cube around until it's sort of rock shaped. Pressing F will resize your brush and Shift F will change the strength. So I think that's fine. Now let's go back to layout mode. And the next stage is to use the multi-resolution modifier. So we go to add modifier, multi-resolution modifier, and you can find out more about this in the link in the description. But you'll see what it does here. If I press subdivide, it will subdivide the mesh. It's like the subdivision surface modifier, but it's a tiny bit more complicated. You can go very detailed with this. So if I keep subdividing, just watch your face count down the bottom here. If I go into edit mode, you can see the face count of the original and then back into object mode and it gives me 24,000 faces. I'll keep subdividing and for most machines that are reasonably good, you should be able to go above a million. So I've subdivided six times and I'm one and a half million faces. This is a fourth gen i7 machine. So you might struggle to go that high perhaps on a laptop and you might only be able to go to five. It shouldn't make too much difference though. The good thing about the multi-resolution modifier is that you can go down the preview steps as you can see there and it slowly reduces the quality until you get to the start again. So that's quite a clever thing really. So I'll put it back up to six. Now at this point we can go to the sculpting mode and we can sculpt some very nice details on here ready to bake out for our normal maps and our cavity maps. So I'm going to change from the grab brush here and I'm going to change it to the draw brush. I'll zoom into my model a bit and pull out this workspace here. I'll minimize the symmetry. And what I want to use is this texture tab here. This makes it nice and easy to put textures on our rocks. If I use the draw brush at the moment, it will just draw onto my object, as you can see there. And I want to paint on rocky textures instead. So to the texture tab, and I want to create a new texture. But before I do that, I'm just going to pull out another window here. So I'll go to the very corner, pull out that window. So I've got two windows there and change this one to the texture properties. So anything I put into the texture tab here under the workspace settings tab will appear on my texture tab. So when I press new, it creates a new texture in my texture tab. If you don't want to pull out a new window, you can just flick between them here, texture tab and workspace tab but I find this is very helpful. What you'll need to do next is download some rock alphas. I'll give you a link in the description to great places for that, but textures.com has some fantastic ones. Just type in rock and you'll get lots of rock alphas. I'll show you what I mean by that. If I press open now, you can see all the alphas I've got. So they're black and white images. The ones that work well are the ones that are slightly blurry like this. These are the ones I got from texture.com here and there's some lovely rock alphas there. So I'll Click on this one to start with, and you can see it updates in the texture here. Now when I start drawing, you can see it bringing out those rocky bits. I'll undo that for now, because I actually want the strength 
fairly low for this, so somewhere maybe between 0.1 and 2. And I feel like that's a bit better. Notice when I middle click and move around now, it does a preview mode, so you can only see it when you're still. Now you can change the mapping type down here to something like random and then put random strokes on, which can be helpful. Or you can go down a bit further and go to stroke and instead of space, change it to anchored. And then you can click and drag and sort of pull out these rocky looking things here. So already that's starting to look rocky-ish. You can obviously up your strength if you want to change the actual look of your rock. And we can add a new texture brush. So in our brush workspace panel, the one at the top here, if we click new, it goes blank. If I click on it, you can see my original one here and there's the new one. And it's created a new one for me over here so I can press open and find another brush. I'll choose this one this time. And you can see it update there. And I can start using that as my brush. And you can see this is looking very sort of lava rock-ish. I'll undo that for a second and bring the strength right down for this one. So you want to change your strength for different brushes. And I'm going to just use this as a subtle effect across my rock. Just going to smooth some of these out. If you hold shift while painting, you smooth out your object and you can smooth out the surface if you like. So you might want to add a few brushes. You can change the shape of your rock by using the other sculpting brushes. Scrape is a really good one and you can sort of flatten out areas. At the moment, I'm doing this all with a mouse. When I go back to my draw brush, you'll see that I've still got the textures there available. So pull in a few rock textures, experiment, pull your rock around, have a bit of fun. Be creative if you want. You don't really have to, you can actually just get away with one texture and just pull your rock around, that's absolutely fine. And it can still turn out pretty decent. Okay, so there's an okay looking rock. If I go back to layout mode now, you can see that when I go down the preview stages, slowly going down and then the detail changes until we get to zero where we started with. And when I go from zero to one, there's quite a change in the shape. Now if I go back up to the top, which is six, and press apply base, that will give this shape to the very base level. So if I go back down to zero, you can see that it's changed the base shape to match the top shape at level six. But personally, I feel like it's not really close enough. It is important that you match your base level or your low poly to your high poly in terms of shape as close as possible. You can see the difference between level one and level zero. And I don't think these sharp edges are gonna look very good when they're rendered. So what I prefer to do is create a duplicate of this. So Shift D and left click. And now we have a duplicate, which is cube 001. I'm going to call this cube low poly or cube LP. And the original one, I'm going to call cube HP. So we've got a high poly and a low poly. On the high poly, let's put that up to six again and just hide that for the moment. So press that I to hide it. And on the cube low poly, I'm going to put it up to one and then I'm going to apply it when it's like this. So it's 1,500 faces and I'll press apply. So we've got this rock now that matches fairly closely to the high poly. When I press on the high poly and make that visible, you can see it overlaps pretty closely. That's really important when you're creating normal maps and cavity maps or baking out from one object to another. So let's hide the high poly again. And with our low poly selected, I want to reduce the polygon count a bit so that it's a better low poly model for gaming. So a good modifier for that is the decimate modifier. You can use the new remesh modifier as well in the sculpt mode, but I'm just going to use the decimate because I think it does a slightly better job with these rocks. So decimate and then bring the ratio down. You can see the face count here as I bring it down and we can get quite low. We can go to something around 300 and that's looking pretty good. Once you're happy with that, press apply. Go into edit mode and you might want to tidy bits up if there's any bits that are really awkward and odd. And you can see it's done a really good job of turning that into a low poly model. There's some sort of very sharp bits around the place and you could possibly tidy those up if you want to. The way you do that is you'd go across to the active tool and workspace settings under options and click auto merge. You can then grab a vertex and press G twice to grab and slide, slide it into another one and then it will merge those vertices. What you do have to be careful of is ones like this. Ones that are really close to an edge like that, they don't work very well. So GG, slide it to another vertices and it should be fine. 
just go around your model and check that you haven't got any other ones that are really close and that looks fine. So we've got our low poly and we've got our high poly. So back into object mode and let's go to the shading tab. So with our low poly cube selected, let's move in on it. And with the material, I'll change it to rock low poly. So we're quite sure which material we're using. I'll hide this now and open up the high poly cube and notice that it's sharing the same material. So make sure it's got a new material, then you won't get confused. So new material, rock HP. Now you can see all the detail in this high poly rock and we want to get that into a normal map onto our low poly rock, which is here. I'll right click and shade smooth. That's important to do that on both objects. So the high poly and the low poly, otherwise it will come across in your normal map. And what you will also need to do, which I forgot to do here, is to unwrap the low poly rock. A smart UV project is absolutely fine for these sort of rocks. So in edit mode, press U, smart UV project. And I'd put the island up to 0 0.03. So with both of them visible, make sure you select the high poly first and the low poly second. You'll know it's selected second because it's a slightly more yellowy color. So it's the active object. The one you choose last is the active object. So when we go across to the render tab and we go to the baking section, which can only be found in cycles, of course, we can then go down to bake and we've got that option selected to active. Let's bring down that dialog box there. Now you can use a cage and I have got a tutorial about using cages and why they're useful and they're in fact better, but it's a longer process. If your low poly is a fairly close shape to your high poly, you should be okay just upping the ray distance a bit, so something like 0.3. The ray distance is how far the rays shoot out to meet the low poly and the high poly. So you can have a bit of distance between them and that's where you need to up your ray distance. If your high poly is completely encompassed by your low poly, so if I select my low poly cube and scale it up, for example, and it's all inside like that, you don't have to up the ray distance because the rays are pointing outwards from the high poly hitting the low poly shape. If they're closer, like they are when I do that, you have to up the ray distance. Sometimes it's preferable not to make it really big like that because it sort of balloons out and it stretches your texture. So once again, high poly, make sure the high poly is selected, then the low poly, and that's highlighted yellow. Bake type, we want to go to normal map and we're all ready to bake. We just need a texture now to bake onto. So let's create a new texture. Let's call this Rock Norms 2 because I've created one already. Now you can create a nice high pixel one if you want, 2048 by 2048. And we don't need the alpha, that will just increase the file size of the texture. Press OK. We need that texture in the Rock Low Poly material. So Shift A, Texture, Image Texture, and then find your Rock Norms 2. You don't have to hook this up. You just have to make sure it's selected. So that's the active texture now. And the cube low poly is the active object. So we're going from the high poly to the low poly, which is the selected to the active. And we're baking it onto the rock norms texture. If I press bake now, this instantly turns blue and we can see the texture baking dialog box down the bottom there. Let's zoom out a bit and we can see it's a reasonably good bake. Now, what I forgot to do was to unwrap my cube. So if your bake doesn't work, it may be that your cube isn't unwrapped. This is the automatic unwrap, as it were, that the cube originally had. I'll press Control Spacebar so we can see what this looks like. It's a good bake. The unwrap, however, will have a fair bit of stretching in it. You may not notice it too much, but it will cause problems with stretching of textures later on when we come to paint our texture. So ideally, you've done the Smart UV Project. I'm going to leave this how it is, then you can see what sort of effects that's going to have. So control spacebar to go back to this mode. We can hide our high poly now and make sure our low poly is selected. I can then hook this up to the normals. Shift A, vector normal map. The last thing we will need to change, as you can see it looks a bit weird, is the color space. I can't change the color space at the moment. I need to save my texture. And now that I've saved my texture, I can change it to non-color data. And you can see now that we've got this lovely high poly detail onto our low poly model. In the next episode, I'll talk about how to bake out the cavity maps or the pointiness maps. And you can use those for all sorts of things like roughness and ambient occlusion. So thanks for watching and I hope this helps.